Hi everybody, so today I wanted to talk about the inverse square law. The inverse square law is very important in photography because the photography is essentially capturing light and the inverse square law is directly related to light. It's essentially the law that explains how quickly light falls off from a point source of light. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the law and show an example of some lighting situations where it'll, it can come in handy in everyday use. Okay, the official definition for the inverse square law as it relates to light is the inverse square law states that the intensity of the light is inversely, inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the light source. So essentially in photography, what that definition is saying is that basically when you double the distance from any point source of light, you only get one quarter uh, power of that original source of light. So if you, let's say, at, if you're at, you have a flash here and you're at two feet away and let's say that flash is metering at f 2.8 if you double the distance you're only going to get a quarter of that light okay so in this uh, discussion I can refer to everything in stops so in photography light is measured in stops of light so you're basically either doubling your light or having your light so when you talk about ISO shutter speed aperture, uh, flash power, and distance, we're always usually talking about uh, stops of light. So just a real quick rundown of how that works. So let's say you're, you have um, your aperture is at 2.8, right, for a proper exposure and whatever your shutter speed and ISO is. So if you stop down to f4, which is the next stop of light, you are having the amount of light. So now, so you just reduce your light 50%. And then if you stop down to the next stop after that, which would be uh, f5.6, then you're having it again. So if you go from 2.8 to f4, which is one stop, you're having it, then you have it again. That's essentially four stops of light. So you basically, I mean four times. Two stops of light is four, uh, four times the brightness. So f5.6 is four times less bright than f2.8. And then it goes on from there. Then the next stop would be f8, which would be um, eight, eight times less bright than f2.8 and so on. And same with shutter speed and so on. So it goes on exponentially. So the inverse square law related to stops is essentially saying that you lose 75% uh, of the light when you double the distance from the point source of light, which is two stops of light. So I hope that's... Uh, not too confusing for you guys. I'll show you a quick example of it. I'm gonna show you some measurements along this wall. That's why I have this wide angle shot. Um, I'm gonna, I have a flash set up right here. I'm gonna take measurements with my light meter at where the proper exposure is from, uh, from by one stop of light each. And you can see how quickly the light falls off with inverse square law. So let's, let me get to that. Okay, so what I've done here is I took my meter, I have my flash set at a uh, quarter power, assuming an ISO of 100, and let's ran my meter along the wall, and I took measurements uh, at each break at one stop of light. So I taped off where one stop of light would be for each measurement. So here, um, again, I had my flash at quarter power, ISO 100. Here, um, that was at, at F22, then here was at f16, here measured at f11, f8, f5.6, and f4. So as you can see here, the light falls off really quickly, right? Because you gotta remember the distance from here to here, as, as you get further and further away from the light source, the difference between each stop gets further and further away. So as you can see here, the distance between f4 and f5.6 is a whole lot bigger than, which is one stop of light, than the distance here, which is exact, which is about four stops of light, which is the difference there of one stop. So how this really matters is when, let's say you're taking a group shot, you want to put people in 
right about the same exposure, right? So if you have somebody really close to the flash, let's say here, and you're shooting at f22 to get the proper exposure, and you have somebody just, you know, two feet behind them, directly behind them, well, that person is going to be one, two stops less bright than the person here because of the inverse square law, right? Which would mean basically two stops is, two, is four times less bright. So you're going to want, if you have a group shot, you're going to want people around here. Let's say you got two or three people. You're going to want people within this distance. So the people standing here are right about within one stop of light and even more so here you have more of a, of a distance. So the light is more gradual falling off from here to here, as opposed to here, as you can see, how quickly the light falls off. So here's about two feet from the flash. You double the distance, four feet. See, it's right here, where you get two stops of light. One, two, and you're here. So that's how important inverse square law works. So you can see how quickly the light falls off it's also important where you can use this example, let's say if you want to darken the background, um, you want a background to fall uh, into darkness. Well, if you got a person here at, uh, what is this, F22, so this would be 16. If you got a person here, you're taking a picture at F16, and let's say you got a wall way back here at F4, well, that's one, that wall is going to be one, two, three, four stops less bright than the person or whatever it is you have exposing here with your flash, which would be if you're, if you're counting uh, multiples of, of, of stops, you got four times, so you got two, four, eight, 16. So this wall back here is 16 times less bright than here. And that distance is, I'm not even sure, I don't have my measuring tape. The inverse square law not only just applies to um, flash photography, but also applies to ambient light. For example, you know, when you're just out there um, in the middle of the day using the sun as your ambient light. When you think about it, so, so the sun is, you know, 90 plus million miles away. So um, that's the point light source, right? So if you're here and you've got someone else that's, you know, you double the distance from, let's say you're here 90 plus million miles away and you double the distance to... Uh, another two feet, there's a, it's, it's going to be the same amount of light, essentially. Um, it's, you, it's not going to be noticeable because that's the point. So it's not the distance from the camera to the subject, it's the distance from the subject to the light source. So, like for example, if you have a reflector, however, if you're reflecting, here's the sun, and you've got the, the sun uh, is coming this way, and you've got a reflector here, and it's, now that's re-emitting the light, pushing it back onto your subject. Now your reflector becomes the new point source of light. And if you're two feet away from the reflector and you go four feet away from the reflector, now you're gonna be receiving one quarter of the amount of light that you were at two feet away when you double the distance of the inverse square law. So you just gotta think of what is emitting light, what is reflecting light, all, all of that light follows the inverse square law and that's how it behaves. I hope this isn't too confusing for you and I was able to explain it to the best of my ability. Uh, of what the inverse square law uh, does and how light behaves because it is really important to your photography. If you grasp it and understand it, uh, so, you know, even in your mind, you don't have to know all the specific details, but even in your mind, it'll help you grow as a photographer, understanding how light behaves. Uh, I mean, you know, when you look at stuff differently, you will just see things. Photographers typically see light differently anyway. Uh, because they're always looking at how light falls on a subject, things like that. So the inverse square law is just an explanation of how that happens, and it's really important to understand. So I hope that helps, and uh, you grasp it. It took me a while to understand it, but once I was able to pick it up and see how it worked in this everyday lighting environments, it really helped me understand just more. It just helped me grow as a photographer. So I hope that helps, and I'll talk to you guys soon.